Weapon, shapely, naked, wan, Head from the mother's bowels drawn, Wooded flesh and metal bone, Limb only one and lip only one, Gray-blue leaf by red heat grown, Helve produced from a little seed sown, Resting the grass amid and upon, To be leaned and to lean on, Strong shapes and attributes of strong shapes, Masculine trades, sights, and sounds, Long varied train of an emblem, Dabs of music, Fingers of the organist skipping staccato Over the keys of the great organ. Welcome are all earth's lands, each for its kind. Welcome are lands of pine and oak. Welcome are lands of the lemon and fig. Welcome are lands of gold. Welcome are lands of wheat and maize. Welcome those of the grape. Welcome are mountains, flats, sands, forests, prairies. Welcome the rich borders of rivers, tablelands, openings, lands rich as lands of gold or wheat, and fruit lands, lands of mines, lands of the manly and rugged ones, lands of coal, copper, lead, tin, zinc, lands of iron, lands of the make of the axe. The log at the woodpile, the axe supported by it, the sylvan hut, the vine over the doorway, the space cleared for a garden, the irregular tapping of rain down on the leaves after the storm is lulled, the wailing and moaning at intervals, the thought of the sea, the thought of ships struck in the storm and put on their beam ends, and the cutting away of masts, the sentiment of the huge timbers of old-fashioned houses and barns, the remembered print or narrative, the voyage at adventure of men, families, goods, the loose drift of character, the inkling through random types, the solidification, the glad clear sound of one's own voice, the merry song, the natural life of woods, the strong day's work, the blazing fire at night, the sweet taste of supper, the talk, the bed of hemlock boughs, and the beer skin, the house builder at work in cities or anywhere, the preparatory jointing, squaring, sawing, mortising, the hoist up of beams, the push of them in their places, laying them regular, the blows of mallets and hammers, the attitudes of men, their curved limbs bending, standing astride the beams, driving in pins, holding on by the posts and braces, the hooked arm over the plate, the other arm wielding the axe, the floor men forcing the planks close to be nailed, their postures bringing their weapons downward on the bearers, the echoes resounding through the vacant building, spar makers in the spar yard, the swarming row of well grown apprentices, the swing of their axes on the square hued log shaping it toward the shape of a mast, the brisk short crackle of the steel driven slantingly into the pine, the butter colored chips flying off in great flakes and slivers the limber motion of brawny young arms and hips in easy costumes, the constructor of wharves, bridges, piers, bulkheads, floats, stays against the sea, the forger at his forge furnace, and the user of iron after him, the maker of the axe, large and small, and the welder and temperer, the chooser breathing his breath on the cold steel and trying the edge with his thumb, the one who clean shapes the handle and sets it firmly in the socket, the shadowy processions of the portraits of the past users also, the primal patient mechanics, the architects and engineers, 
the far-off Assyrian edifice and Misra edifice, the Roman lictors preceding the consuls, the antique European warrior with his axe in combat, the uplifted arm, the clatter of blows on the helmeted head, the death howl, the limpsy tumbling body, the rush of friend and foe thither, the siege of revolted lieges determined for liberty, the summons to surrender, the battering at castle gates, the truce and parley, the sack of an old city in its time, the bursting in of mercenaries and bigots tumultuously and disorderly, roar, flames, blood, drunkenness, madness, goods freely riffled from houses and temples, screams of women in the grip of brigands, craft and thievery of camp followers, men running, old persons despairing, the hell of war, the cruelties of creeds, the list of all executive deeds and words just or unjust, the power of personality just or unjust. Muscle and pluck forever, what invigorates life invigorates death, and the dead advance as much as the living advance, and the future is no more uncertain than the present. For the roughness of the earth and of man encloses as much as the delicatesse of the earth and of man, and nothing endures but personal qualities. What do you think endures? Do you think a great city endures? Or a teeming manufacturing state? Or a prepared constitution? Or the best built steamships? Or hotels of granite and iron? Or any chef d'oeuvre of engineering, forts, armaments? Away! These are not to be cherished for themselves. They fill their hour. The dancers dance. The musicians play for them. The show passes. All does well enough, of course. All does very well till one flash of defiance. A great city is that which has the greatest men and women. If it be a few ragged huts, it is still the greatest city in the whole world. The place where the great city stands is not the place of stretched wharves, docks, manufactures, deposits of produce merely, nor the place of the tallest and costliest buildings or shops selling goods from the rest of the earth, nor the place of the best libraries and schools, nor the place where the money is plenteous, nor the place of the most numerous population where the city stands with the brawniest breed of orators and bards, where the city stands that is beloved by these, and loves them in return, and understands them, where no monuments exist to heroes, but in common words and deeds, where thrift is in its place, and prudence is in its place, where the men and women think lightly of the laws, where the slave ceases, and the master of slaves ceases, where the populace rise at once against the never-ending audacity of elected persons, where fierce men and women pour forth, as the sea to the whistle of death pours its sweeping and unripped waves, where outside authority enters always after the precedence of inside authority, where the citizen is always the head and ideal, and president, mayor, governor, and what not, are agents for pay, where children are taught to be laws to themselves, and to depend on themselves, where equanimity is illustrated in affairs, where speculations on the soul are encouraged, where women walk in public processions in the streets the same as the men, where they enter the public assembly and take places the same as the men, where the city of the faithfulest friends stands, there the great city stands. A sterile landscape covers the ore, 
There is as good as the best for all the forbidding appearance. There is the mine. There are the miners. The forge furnace is there. The melt is accomplished. The hammers men are at hand with their tongs and hammers. What always served and always serves is at hand. Than this nothing has better served. Served the fluent-tongued and subtle-sensed Greek and long ear the Greek, served in building the buildings that last longer than any, served the Hebrew, the Persian, and the most ancient Hindustanese, served the mound-raiser on the Mississippi, served those whose relics remain in Central America, served Albic temples in woods or on plains, with unhewn pillars and the Druids, served before any of those the venerable and harmless men of Ethiopia, served the making of helms for the galleys of pleasure and the making of those for war, served all great works on land and all great works on the sea, for the medieval ages and before the medieval ages, served not the living only then as now, but served the dead. The shapes arise, the shape measured, sawed, jacked, joined, stained, the coffin shape for the dead to lie within his shroud, the shape got out in posts, in the bedstead posts, in the posts of the bride's bed, the shape of the little trough, the shape of the rockers beneath, the shape of the babe's cradle, the shape of the floor planks, the floor planks for the dancer's feet, the shape of the roof of the home of the happy young man and woman, the roof over the well-married young man and woman, the shapes arise, the shape of the prisoner's place in the courtroom, and of him or her seated in the place, the shape of the liquor bar leaned against by the young rum drinker and the old rum drinker, the shape of the shamed and angry stairs trod by sneaking footsteps, the shape of the sly settee and the adulterous unwholesome couple, the shape of the gambling board with its devilish winnings and losings, the shape of the stepladder for the convicted and sentenced murderer, the murderer with haggard face and pinioned arms, the sheriff at hand with his deputies, the silent and white-lipped crowd, the dangling of the rope, the shapes arise, the shapes of doors giving many exits and entrances, the door passing the dissevered friend, flushed and in haste, the door that admits good news and bad news, the door whence the son left home confident and puffed up, the door he entered again from a long and scandalous absence, diseased, broken down, without innocence, without means. Her shape arises, she less guarded than ever, yet more guarded than ever. The gross and soiled she moves among do not make her gross and soiled. She knows the thoughts as she passes, nothing is concealed from her. She is none the less considerate or friendly, therefore. She is the best beloved, it is without exception. She has no reason to fear, and she does not fear. Oaths, quarrels, hiccuped songs, smutty expressions are idle to her as she passes. She is silent, she is possessed of herself. They do not offend her. She receives them as the laws of nature receive them. She is strong. She, too, is a law of nature. There is no law stronger than she is. The main shapes arise, shapes of democracy total, result of centuries, shapes ever projecting other shapes, shapes of turbulent manly cities, shapes of the friends and home-givers of the whole earth, shapes bracing the earth and braced with the whole earth.